So I've been wanting to put together a show about battery management. Um, being in the Middle East right now, things are cooling down significantly after the, wind, after the summer months and everybody's busy kitting up their vehicles, getting it ready for the three, four, five months that we have to go camping, overlanding, uh, and pretty much get out and enjoy the cooler weather. However, being in the temperatures that we are in the Middle East, our batteries do take a hammering and pretty much year on year, I'm having to replace batteries on, on any of the vehicles. Um, and what triggered this was actually last night, uh, my son gave, a, gave me a call frantically. Um, his Dodge Ram's battery had died and he's stuck at work. And um, the car's only two years old. So from a brand new vehicle, two years, battery gone. Um, my truck, I pretty much replace the batteries every year, every year and a half. I, I don't know what it is. I'd love to speak to a professional about the heat and why the batteries don't last so long over here. But if you're in the Middle East, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, um, busy packing up my truck. We're about to embark this afternoon to go on a short trip. Um, and vehicles pretty much packed up. I opened up the kitchen compartment where I have a voltmeter and my dual battery system is running at 9 volts. So my batteries, my yellow top batteries have died. Now, let's get into the battery management before I get into anything else. How do you know when your battery is charged? How do you know when your battery is discharged? And where should your batteries be? Well, 12.7 to 13.2 pretty much is a 100% battery. 12.4 volt is 50% of the battery and 12 volt is 25% of the battery. 11.8 volts means your battery is flat. Now, if you run a deep cycle battery, a deep cycle battery, you will be able to draw more than the 11.8, but this will shorten the lifespan of the battery. So, if you run angle like I do, my fridges pretty much, if I had to stick it on right now, they'll probably run with the batteries, with the batteries at 9 volt. They will draw them down all the way until basically zero. It is not recommended to run your batteries below 10.8 volt. So, let's first discuss. How do I me measure my voltage? How do I know what my batteries are right now? To, you, to those of you that don't have any management systems in your vehicle, there's couple of simple ways right so standard voltmeter um, stick it onto the battery and it'll give you your reading a far simpler way to do it is you pick up a little voltmeter like this and you install it on your dash um, in the battery box wherever you are in your trailer so that when you're at your campsite and you're spending two three four days at one location you can always monitor what your batteries are um, this works just as well, but it's a bit of a schlep to open up the bonnet and test and test and test and test. So I would suggest getting one of these. They're relatively cheap. Most of the places have them and you install that in line or directly onto your battery so that you can manage your battery. So now you're at, the pr you're at an issue where, well, I know why my batteries have failed. While we were down in Salala, um, we spent five or six days with virtually no sun, overcast weather, which means that my solar panels were not giving enough charge into my batteries to fill it up sufficiently for the overnight usage of the fridges. So, and I'm not going to go into depth about this right now, but you need to understand how many amp hour is being drawn from your batteries in your vehicle. So for me, example, I have two fridges. I have the lights that will be on at night. Um, you probably charging my mobile phone on my auxiliary plugs. Um, possibly put the inverter on to charge camera gear. So I have quite a heavy power consumption out of my battery. Now understanding amp, amp hour, how much I'm drawing and how much is going in from my solar panels is very important. Because if I'm replacing 100% of what I'm drawing out, I can run forever. If I'm replacing only 50% of the power that I'm using, 
and my batteries were to last me for two days, it would expand my time by 50%. However, if I'm drawing power and not replacing it sufficiently with my, with my solar panels, I'm going to have the issue that I have right now, where after day three, day four, um, my batteries weren't sufficiently charged, so the overnight usage was bringing my batteries down to eight volts, and it's obviously killed them. Now, the drive back, the 16-hour drive back, the dual battery management system should have replenished it well enough, but over and above, when I did get back, and when you do use so much out of your battery, get yourself a 220 volt normal battery charger. Now, which battery charger should you get? Very simple. If you have got one additional battery in there and it's 55 amp hour, divide it by 10. So you need a charger that is a minimum of 5.5 amp hour. I have 110 amp hour batteries in over there, so my minimum is a 12 amp hour battery charger. Okay? And I'm probably going to get shot down over here. I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a professional or, a, or a, a, a professor by any means in the subject matter. But batteries have to kind of speak the same language. So when you're getting the charging going in, the language going to the battery, if you're trying to shove 100 amp hour into the battery, it's not going to take it. Um, especially the deep cycle batteries prefer to have the cycle start off with a bit of a bang. Um, you probably find that most of the chargers will put in 13.7 to 14 volts in the beginning. And then once the battery gets to the top, so let me explain it to you this way. It's the same way if you have a bucket of water, right? So you can, you can take water and fill, fill the bucket and you can splash it in quite, quite aggressively to start off with. But when you get to the top, you would slow down your pour to make sure that it gets to the top and fills up nicely. Now these charging systems do exactly the same. It will pump in quite heavily in the beginning and then it will slow down and it'll probably trickle charge at about 13.7 volts. Now, if you do that for a long enough time, you can revive your batteries. And I do suggest if you ever go below the 10.8 volts, when you get home, stick your battery on charge overnight for a day, for two days. My car doesn't travel much during the week. Um, it's only for when we go overlanding. So I typically have my batteries on charge full time. With the abuse that I've get put it through the last year and a half, I've killed my batteries. So what am I going to do now? Last night, as I mentioned, my son's battery died on the Dodge Ram. Went through a quick search and I found this company called Batmobile. Now, when I read it on the website, it was Batmobile, and I thought, hey, that's pretty cool. Phoned up the chaps. They were with, at my son's office within 15 minutes, right? That's pretty quick. Now, it obviously depends on where you stay. Um, will depend on how long it's going to take them to get to you. So I gave the guys a call today, and I said to them, listen here, um, both my yellow top Optima batteries, I believe they're dead. Do you stock them, and how quickly can you get out here? Well... I live quite far out of the city, and the guy said to so within an hour we'll be there with two batteries and we'll come test your batteries for you. So the guys are on their way. I can't wait to see what the service is like. I think this kind of service is an absolute must, especially when it gets to batteries. So um, let's wait and see when they get here, and hopefully they've got a professional with them that we can ask a couple of questions on why the batteries don't last that long in the heat. Hey mate, how are you doing? My name's okay. Sean. Yes sir. Thank you for coming through. I'm in dire straits. I need batteries urgently. <laughs> yeah. Nothing's working. Yeah, we can help you with that sir. Uh, when it's come to battery, you are the you call the right number. <laughs> I hope so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me show you what's going on. Okay, Ray. So what I've got here is I got my cranking battery. That's okay. working right now. Um, that's not a problem. But both my auxiliary yellow top optima batteries have died okay so currently at about nine volt okay it should be 12 uh, point above yeah mostly for the proper battery it will 12.65 properly charged yeah 
So uh, I think they've eventually died with all the discharge and the charging and solar panel eventually. This run all to your uh, light, right? And all the accessories. Yeah, have, so right? this is accessories. This is only for start mm -hmm. and running the lights. Okay. Um, so this runs off that. So this doesn't, doesn't do anything yeah, except okay. for start the battery. This runs all the accessories, the inverters, the, the fridges, the evening lights, the whole lot. So 110 amp hour is not enough, no, but that's okay. all I can fit into the engine bay. Yeah, so well, uh, we can help you with that, sir. So we can, I can grab my tools and test it. Okay, fantastic. If it to be replaced, then we will replace it on the spot. Grab your tools, let's have a look. So Ray, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do with that now? So what, does what that tell I'm you? going to do right now is to test your battery. Yeah. If it's still uh, having some power. Yeah. So right now I'm putting the fast. Obviously it's only nine volts, yeah. nine point eighty six. So it's forty sixty. Like uh, the battery is dead. Yes. It cannot even recover surely. Yeah. So let me do the test right now. Unfortunately, to inform you that your battery is dead out of seven hundred sixty. 765 left is only 92 en <laughs> so uh, i mean he, he, he's done it's surely good. yeah he's done already <laughs> the service is over so, okay so you need a new battery what to do yeah so hang on and i will get my Stick tools so yeah thank you yeah, I'll take all of them. <laughs> Can you fit them all in my in my car? No, sir. Only what I will put is two battery only for your I car. I think I need all this for all the power that I use. Then we will put. Uh, we'll we better put solar uh, panel on your roof. Yeah, I've got solar panels. <laughs> I've got two hundred watt solar panels. So Ray is just busy finishing up um, the installation of the two new batteries, and we're going to connect the both the terminals now. So I run my batteries in parallel so that I've got fifty five amp hour and 55 amp hour, run them in parallel becomes 110 amp hour at 12 volts. If you run them in series, you're going to end up with 24 volts and it's not going to be good for your appliances. So don't do that. Make sure that you run them in parallel. Um, I'm not going to explain to you how. Everybody should know how. So we're going to hook this up right now and hopefully we should be around about the 12.5, 12.6 right now because they've been in storage. So what do you think, Ray? 12.5, 12.6? 12, 12, 12, yeah, it will be 12 above 12, 12 and above. Uh, 12.5. Right, so now importantly, the batteries have been in storage. So they are brand new. I suggest when you get to your new batteries, it, these are not my cranking batteries. So the cranking battery works completely different to my deep cycle batteries that run all my accessories. I suggest with your deep cycle batteries, as you put them in, stick them on charge overnight, get them to the full capacity before you start abusing the batteries. So that's what I'll be doing tonight put it on charge right through the evening and get them up to the optimal full 100% uh, level which I said to use anything between 12.7 and 13.2 so we're going to pump 14 volts into it now with the charger and it will go up and start trickle charging at about 13.7 which means my batteries will be 100% in the morning so what we got now is 12.77 which is really good charge okay so so as I said to you 12.7 basically is but the range between 12.7 and 13.2 means the batteries are at 100%. I do suggest, however, that you still put your trickle charger on for the first one and pump it through. Now uh, the battery reading will be good battery. Yeah. After we change the battery, so it's, uh, it's uh, ready to go and uh, conquer the desert. Conquer the world. Conquer the world. So <laughs> our motto is, if it's dusty, drive it. And that's what we do all the time. We don't like tar roads. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so now your car is ready. So you can switch on everything what you want on your car. And there we go. We're Fantastic. good. Fantastic. Listen, yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And very, I hope very to see you again, not on this car, maybe on another car. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, we're busy doing the installation, Ryan's still busy at the back over there with uh, putting the batteries in and Idol, the, one of the owners of the company, popped in, fan of the show, realized that uh, we're doing the installation of the batteries and thought he'll pop in and to come have a look at the truck. So I thought I'll take the opportunity and chat to him about the fantastic service that I've received. So Idol, welcome to thank our you. show and I want to thank you for this great service. Last night, your company literally saved my son's life. I heard that too. <laughs> And then this morning, I, I had no other choice but to also use the same company because the service we received last night was, was great. Yes, so we, we, are very, we are very actually happy and we are proud of ourselves for the, uh, providing this kind of service. It, it, it's and great, we man. started in 2011 when we didn't know that this kind of market will yeah. 
uh, by 2017 is going to grow to this amount. Yes. So back then we started off because one of one of my own cars was stranded. Yeah. And back then I had no knowledge about batteries. So <laughs> I don't think many people do. I exactly. Don't think people exactly. know how to maintain it, especially exactly. in this heat. Just, it, it, that's that's right. And because yeah. batteries are not giving you that ideal life of four right. years, five years, some places other like yeah. which is not that kind of correct uh, a warm environment so yeah. th the batteries do die out here very quickly they do what's well, so, good for your business yeah, that's right that's but, uh, but uh, we still hope that the batteries start you know the technology increases to a way that yeah. in this heat also the batteries uh, lost and especially the ones the deep cycles we got you yes those are the really good ones they yeah you off. know they do they do mm -hmm. and uh, i mean you know what I, I just you've changed the way that i look at a service like this because I've heard of other companies that do this, but I've also heard some, some horror stories where people are just coming in and shoving in a battery and there's no conversation. Ryan arrived, he had a conversation about the batteries, asked me questions about my vehicle, where does everything fit in, and really wanted to understand what the setup was before he moved forward and actually did the in installation. So consummate professionals, really guys, this is not an advert, this is by chance that he's popped in over here. I, I, I love backing companies that give me great service. So. Man, you know what? You guys are doing a great job, Thank and you very much. I Thank love you. the liveries on the vehicles. This is uh, so yeah, cool. This is, it's our, just this is the latest to our family, so this is one of the good ones. This is just, it's, it just shouts out professionalism, man. And I, you know what? Well done. I can't keep saying well done. Excellent Thank job. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. Thanks. We're going to go and have a look at my truck right now, and we're not going to film that. We're going to talk stuff about vehicles. So see you later. Thank you. <laughs> So we're just running through the car with Adel over here and he picked up on my cranking battery that is corroded. So Ryan, what, what causes this? Yeah, it's normal because of the acid. I mean, it's a high acid on this acid, especially on this type of battery, AC Delco. It's yeah. normal for AC Delco having a corrosion. So what you will do, you just get, grab hot water and put it to here on the terminal, water terminal, so it will be okay soon. I mean, it's gonna be okay. So yeah. then after that, apply some grease so it will not happen again. Okay, so just normal engine grease? Just, yes. Yeah? It, yes. Okay, so Ryan's got uh, some boiling water. Let's have a look how this goes. Okay, so we just leave it like that then, eh? Pour it, leave it yeah. for a while, and it sorts itself out. 